Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chetali Bag from the European Bureau of Aviation and Defense Universe based out of Cyprus. With Indian Army facing not so friendly neighbors on both LOC and LAC, and both these neighbors have been glove and arm friends, the task to defend the borders is not only challenging, but also tricky. But nothing is impossible for the Indian Army. Today, to discuss the big brother China, his military expansion, and Sino-Indian border protection, ADU has the pleasure of welcoming retired Major General Ashok Kumar VSF. He is a Kargil war veteran, a defense analyst, visiting fellow of CLAWS, and specializes on neighboring countries with special focus on China. He has commanded an infantry brigade on LSE with China close to 1962 conflict areas. It promises to be a great and informative interaction. I now request Sangeeta Saxena, editor ADU, to take the interaction forward. Welcome, sir. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Chatali. And uh, welcome, General Ashok. It's just wonderful to have you here in ADU's chat room today. And especially when we are, you know, running up to the Indian Army Day on 15th. And uh, nothing better than having it from the horse's mouth. You have had uh, the uh, privilege of commanding a brigade on the in the eastern sector. Then you also have been you, you are also in the, sir. You retired from the eastern command, isn't it, sir? Absolutely, absolutely. Right. So it's just wonderful. You're just a man, sir. We need you today here, and it's just wonderful. So let's begin with it, sir. You're most welcome, and we uh, start with the interview with our first question, wanting to know from you that what are the impediments uh, which are there at the moment in the Sino-Indian relationship? Okay, at the outset, uh, let me thank you and Chetali and ADU uh, to give me this uh, an opportunity to really reflect my views. Uh, and these views are not uh, from the official position of the government or the military sources, so to say, but my analysis and reading over a period of time. And the day today is not only important from the army days perspective, but it is also important because tomorrow we are going to have the 14th core commander level conference to resolve the pending issues of Eastern Ladakh. So a background connect is important. So if you really see in the whole game of the current relationship in which we are embroiled, there are three players, India, Tibet and China. India inherited its independence from British India on 15th August 1947. Now these dates are important. Whereas China uh, became in its current form on 1st October 1949. And it got its independence from Republic of China, which is the current seat of power in Taiwan. Now in these two intervening years and prior to that, uh, while, you know, Britishers are concerned, they were concerned about the uh, Russian uh, Great Grim and they tried to keep uh, Tibet as a buffer state and uh, really never, you know, finalize the uh, formal boundaries in a realistic manner. So once we became independent, we had a chance of, you know, uh, addressing these issues with Tibet and having gone for a permanent solution. But Tibet was also in a state of uh, uh, confusion that some people treated it as an independent nation and it had its own flag. It was allowed to participate in certain international conferences as well. Whereas, you know, some uh, forms it was uh, treated as a vessel state of, you know, China's, you know, Qing dynasty. However, you know, because of these non-delineated borders, we inherited a border issue, you know, from uh, Britishers. Now, as far as border issue is concerned, while it remains in the state of uh, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand and Sikkim, but these are the very trivial ones. The main dispute is in the Aksai Chin area of Ladakh and Arunachal Pradesh of, you know, so-called uh, Tibetan region. Now in Aksai Chin, the dispute actually started because of two lines. One was the Johnson line, which got drawn in 1865 by you know, the JNK state uh, representative to delineate the border of JNK state with Tibet, in which the entire Aksai Chin was shown as part of India. Whereas the second line which got drawn by McDonald McCartney uh, famous line, 
uh, that happened in 1899. Now that line had put the entire Aksai chain with Chinese. So therefore, there is a major dispute that you know, which one should be honored. There are arguments and counter arguments between the two. But physically, China is currently in physical position of Aksai chain and India is only having a claim on that. Now coming to Arunachal Pradesh, now, uh, there was not much of a doubt in this because this border in some form was delineated during the you know, Shimla agreement. But uh, bad for us that in the Shimla agreement where a Chinese uh, representative signed in the initial deliberation on the acceptance of Macron line. But subsequently when the entire document went to China, they refused to sign. So its own you know, uh, metamorphosis you know, remains uh, under a doubt. But in Arunachal Pradesh, uh, China currently claims in its entirety, but as a Southern Tibet in terms of the secondary claim. So that is the you know, broad issue of the Sino-Indian you know, border issue, which has to be you know, uh, solved with a larger you know, efforts. It is not a simplistic, it is you know, pretty complex, which will be you know, emerging more clearly as we you know, discuss the issue uh, further. All right, sir. That was very uh, nicely and aptly, uh, you know, historically traced. Uh, you know, we always talk of advantages and uh, every country wants, you know, to have its own advantages in border situations. What are the advantages uh, Indian Army has at the LEC, sir? I think this is a very, very, you know, uh, important issue which you have raised because these advantages are the ones which are going to manifest uh, to find a place favorably if a conflict takes place. So uh, territorial claims, as I highlighted earlier, you know, were continuing. There was a 1959 offer by the Chinese, wherein they were largely inclined to accept the McMahon line in the East. That is, they were willing to accept Arunachal Pradesh as part of India. In lieu of Aksai Chin being, you know, uh, being their part, with minor adjustments in the Indo intervening states, because as I told you earlier, that they were not the major issues. However, that you know issue uh, did not get resolved for water with the regions. Whether that uh, proposal was you know justified, not justified, that is a part of history now. However, uh, post this, the 1962 happened. Once 1962 happened, uh, a fair amount of area even ahead of the erstwhile control in Aksai Chin, you know, that was uh, overtaken by Chinese. Certain areas they went back also, and a kind of LAC emerged. And uh, from 1976, after the decision of the uh, China Study Group, when uh, Mrs. Gandhi was the Prime Minister, it was decided to delineate patrolling points on the uh, these borders, on the eastern borders. Uh, correction, the uh, eastern Ladakh borders, and so that the Indian Army can patrol those points to assert its authority. Uh, post were not there on all these points, so to say. However, as time progressed, uh, there were you no know, uh, claims, counterclaims, areas of differing perception and things like that. But since army had already tasted a bad experience during 1962, and it was concerned that China may launch such operations in future as well. In response of this post 1962, Indian army posted its troops in forward areas in majority of the places, both in the uh, Eastern Ladakh uh, and also in uh, Arunachal Pradesh and besides in the other central states to include, you know, Sikkim, Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh. So our posture on the LAC became, you know, much more stronger. In the initial years, you know, actually China was nowhere. I distinctly recall of you know having certain discussions that if China has to attack us, how will he attack? Because you know uh, he is not having any uh, border troops and deployment. How will he establish its firm base and how will he launch offensive operations? But China those days was busy factoring the operational and statistical uh, preparations in terms of the road strikes and this thing. But our posture, strong posture on the borders, gave us certain distinct advantages. Firstly, our troops were fully acclimatized. They had first-hand experience of fighting in high altitude and glaciated terrains. Since majority of the combined units turnover, almost the entire Indian army by now has experienced 
you know has to fight the you know uh, fight in the high altitude now such an experience is not available with uh, china and it is probably one of the regions that uh, in galwan despite uh, indian soldiers not attempting to use any kind of weapon when you know chinese had come fully prepared with the you know uh, lethal um, anti riot control weapons and uh, at the cost of suffering 20 lives they you know killed almost 40 uh, plus soldiers of chinese and the story doesn't end here post that also chinese you know leaders and uh, soldiers they are facing very very difficult times to sustain in those high altitude and winters majority of them are feeling you know ill going back and there is a huge challenge of china currently to position troops so our troops in larger number being acclimatized and present and having experience are in a much better position to fight a battle if that takes place that is one major advantage which we have now this is also has forced us actually in a fast paced infrastructure develop initially like if you remember uh, some of you might have gone to leh uh, during your you know holidays so it was not possible to go during uh, winter times Uh, only few people uh, who could go who could afford the you know air travel the land routes were totally locked because of jojila and rohtang both getting closed but what is the situation now now rohtang is almost closed 24/7 uh, 365 days because of atal tunnel same effort is being made in jojila also in another 2 years or so even that will become all weather road so on one hand because of this operational need a ladakh region has been connected with the mainland on all weather conditions 365 now this will you know gravitate tremendous amount of movement from the mainland to there and from there to here and it will not be only happening for soldiers or for fighting it will also bring in a new dimension of integration and development for the people of ladakh and you know rest of the jnk as well besides this fast paced infrastructure develop there is better logistics you know infrastructure already available with uh, india uh, at least in majority of the areas uh, where china is still trying to you know uh, make that china uh, since it uses the conscription army the motivation level is pretty low there whereas we are a volunteer army and we are highly motivated in fact china is currently trying as to how they can recruit some of the tibetan population also to use them for fight but tibetans are not you know uh, accepting their ploy they still don't have requisite trust in the chinese and uh, god uh, forbidden if let's say some uh, tibetans join uh, chinese army i think rather than fearing it that way we will have a golden opportunity to make them stand against china for defending their own nation in times to come and what had happened in east pakistan and west pakistan fight where in large number of east pakistan defected from the armed forces and became part of their you know liberation uh, fight so that possibility also cannot be ruled out which is also to our advantage and of course as we go ahead uh, currently our you know maintenance cost may be high it is higher for the chinese also because in our case our increase in troop level is 3 to 4 times but in case of chinese from his erstwhile mining level he has to put you know 15 times to match the equal numbers so therefore he is also incurring a huge expenditure on that count and uh, in such a situation if conflict takes place and even if we you know reach a stalemate position even that will be a loss of face for china because china is you know aspiring to become a super power in the world and any dent in its you know uh, fight with india which is not decisive will take it back forever right sir absolutely which was this was very very nicely explained to, and i'm sure our audience would really have gained by what you said continuing on this sir i also wanted uh, to understand from you that uh, strategically is there an advantage uh, in eastern ladakh in comparison to arunachal or vice versa i must compliment you uh, mrs saxena for this brilliant question now the analogy which i am going to present it to you it is my own view you know it has not been stated elsewhere and i hope i am right and you know people take note of this now you just see Aksai in China was already in control, which it was claiming. 
in Arunachal Pradesh, though it was claiming, but it was not in control. So in the initial years, it developed huge infrastructure in terms of road, rail, air feeds, and all kinds of population management opposite Arunachal Pradesh, which happens to be Eastern Tibet. And there he is you know, much well prepared. Now, as against that, the Western Tibetan region, uh, which is opposite Eastern Ladakh, the infrastructure development was not much, except the main road, which was leading to Karakuram Pass, Elsewhere, it was in bits and pieces and not as much as required to launch a major offensive, you know, against a country. Now, had China done something opposite Arunachal Pradesh, it would have been easy for him to conduct operations. And that is something which was, you know, looking for. But by, uh, you know, uh, this thing which has happened in Israel, Ladakh by default or design, see the what, you know, contour has changed. Now we have forced him to develop infrastructure in an area which was having the infrastructure deficit. His three uh, sensibilities are converging at a common point. What are these three sensibilities? One is that Xinjiang region where he has a you know, lot of problems. Third is his linkage with Pakistan for collusivity because of the Karakoram Pass linked CPA corridor, which he's trying to develop to the Gwadar and Karachi port uh, to offsets its energy movement uh, sensitivities in the you know, Indian Ocean. So that is also going through uh, Karakoram Pass, which is quite close to Dipsang uh, Plains in, you know, in, in Eastern Ladakh. And third is, you know, the uh, Aksai Chin per se. So by happening this, if there is a conflict tomorrow, India will be able to take on in one go his three sensibilities in one go. As against, let's say, suppose had he been, you know, uh, trying to fight in mm. Arunachal Pradesh and, you know, China, uh, Pakistan in any case will jump in any uh, fight which takes place uh, with China. So we would have got divided, widely separated, and we would have had a huge challenge. But in the process, what has happened, now the China has converged its opposition to an area where it suits us. And if any conflict on the LAC, if we make any gain, that will be for us for you know, times to come. Now, this is you know, very, very uh, important. And uh, uh, if, if you really see you know, the geography of that area, if we happen to capture Karakoram Pass, you, know, you must understand that even Siachen Glacier is with us. Uh, and this Dipsang uh, Plains, the western portion is with us. In case we are able to just capture the Karakoram Pass, a single activity will make, you know, Chinese design collapse in a big way. So I think it is a major strategic advantage, whether it has happened because of default or you know, some deep planning at some end, I don't know that. But it is something which is to an Indian gain. And if something happens there, you know, like what happened in Galwan, it was able to you know, actually energize the whole country together. We in the country have you know, different kind of fault lines. But when a Galwan clash kind of thing happens, it unifies us. Similarly, if anything of that kind happens in Ladakh region where, you know, he is already having excitement of ours, which is, you know, believed by the entire nation. So it will also unify the entire nation, which is going to be a big, big gain for a country like ours. Absolutely, sir. I think that is uh, really well explained. And, you know, in continuation with it, uh, you know, these names, Galwan and Gogra and Hot Springs and, uh, you know, uh, fingers became very uh, common and commonplace and you know people were discussing them in their drawing room could see the coverage of the op ops uh, last year uh, and uh, what I wanted to understand from you was is there a common man's perspective to each of these places so that our audience can understand uh, very well brought out you know uh, had there been a map probably the understanding would have been better but that not standing, if you in Eastern Ladakh see from north to south, you encounter Devsang Plains first, and uh, thereafter the Galwan Valley, the Gogra Hot Springs, then the North Bank of Pengangsu Lake, and then the South Bank of Pengangsu Lake. That is how they are sequenced from you know, uh, north to south. Now, Devsang Plains is you know, most important uh, because of its proximity to the Karakuram Pass. 
and the uh, terrain also allows you know large scale employment of mech forces as well currently it is divided between the two countries and there are you know fair amount of incursion which you know chinese have done in this particular area uh, this had happened also in 2013 in this area uh, and this is you know going to be in my mind the toughest uh, issue to negotiate you know tomorrow is the 14th core commanders conference Uh, wherein this is also you know one of the issues to be resolved but you know i have my you know uh, reasons to believe that probably it may not happen uh, tomorrow and it may require you know more deliberations in days to come thereafter if you come to the you know galwan valley uh, uh, that issue after the conflict has resolved uh, but in the resolution also you know pak uh, the china has gone back around 2 uh, kilometers uh, from that point of conflict we have also uh, been prohibited to the patrol the area a kind of buffer area has got created actually this buffering is you know going to take place in almost all discussions so finally where we will be able to gain our you know final stance pre up till 2020 to patrol where we were patrolling or not that will also remain a matter of you know actually deliberation whether the line of actual control uh, gets uh, converted into line of control or not or that kind of deployment that will be for people to see but whether the line of actual control the line gets replaced by a belt and a buffer kind of area gets created you know that will be something very very interesting uh, to take note so galwan valley stands resolved gogra has also been resolved hot spring is one thing which is again on the table tomorrow uh, this is between debsang plains and uh, hot spring hot spring is the low hanging fruit there is not much in fact uh, there was a, some kind of agreement in the 12th court mandal level conference for uh, china to move back but you know they haven't done so so hopefully unless they come with some obstructionist mindset it should you know uh, see the light of the day tomorrow and uh, then of course the north bank of pengongso and south bank of pengongso uh, have been you know settled south bank of pengongso before we uh, did our action on you know uh, in august uh, there was no deployment and currently again the troops have been withdrawn back and uh, on the uh, north bank um, there are famous fingers 1 to 8 so we had our deployment near finger 3 but we used to patrol uh, till finger 8 because as per our uh, perception the lac runs uh, from finger 8 as far as china is concerned at times they tell that the you know lac runs uh, from finger 4 at times they say it also goes to finger 2 so finally we are somewhere around finger 3 they have gone up to finger 8 the area between as of now is not being patrolled it has been left for you know subsequent stages to be negotiated and uh, whatever has happened you know on uh, south bank of pengongso Uh, which currently has forced actually uh, china to make a bridge on the pengongso on its own side to link the uh, north and south uh, sides because they were taken totally by surprise more on this you know as you in fact further uh, so yes uh, you know i'm sure the audience will find it easy to understand with the way you have explained it but i you know uh, not only i i think everybody has a question which uh, is uh, you know somebody like you only would be able to answer why did china in 20, april 2020 do what it did see it didn't require as far as i feel it didn't require they had access chain most of access chain is with them and uh, even then if they did something like that what could be the logic what could be the psychology behind that i think you know this is a very very important question to ponder uh, because there are no simple answers to this as you rightly brought out you know access chain is already uh, with them in you know uh, uh, the deliberations at the strategic level also it was always thought that if chinese attack you know besides the you know contours of the you know military actions their prime area will be tamang or in arunachal pradesh uh, because you know aksai chin whatever it was claiming largely it was already holding but still it did it you know in uh, eastern ladakh so as i told you you know it's matter of conjecture the certain theories which are being you know propagated for this one is the abrogation of article 370 and there are two impacts of this one is that it is you know uh, now uh, ladakh has been made union territory uh, separately from jnk and uh, in the parliament also our honorable home minister has stated that the you know in, including aksai chin is part of the you know ladakh as and when it you know comes our way 
so one is that you know the uh, legal framework which has been given to ladakh uh, uh, because of the article 370 and a second you know spiral of the same point is that uh, article 370 actually uh, doesn't affect china much uh, because aksai chin any case you know uh, has that kind of you know sanctity from our parliament earlier also but it has more impact on pakistan now pakistan and china are so close to each other it could be also to assuage pakistan's perceived feeling also so that is one is the article 370 second is that the india has been of late uh, going in for the fast pace infrastructure development you know it is unprecedented both in terms of the you know roads uh, railway lines tunneling and other things you know and it is uh, it is not happening you know post april 2020 for past 3 4 years we have realized that if we have to integrate the areas with us with our 70 markers our roads tracks civil population everything has to exist so we did you know fast paced uh, infrastructure development and in that the eastern ladakh also plays a pivotal role because of the daulat beg oldi airfield our capacity to interject the uh, traffic of you know chinese moving on the uh, karakoram pass led highway or elsewhere you know enhances so our uh, capacity to interject their infrastructure enhances so that could be the another fear that they want to limit that you know that is the uh, second reason third could be it's you know the growing indian us relations uh, because of you know uh, initially from being non aligned status to little being pro to ussr and now we are more pro to us though we are trying to balance our relationship with us and ussr that is a separate issue but largely being part of the quad number of exercises interactions you know it is becoming almost pro us stance of the country and since uh, us has given a public commitment to defend taiwan should chin, you know china attack that and china has publicly spoken that taiwan is its part and they will take it in fact taiwan figures as its one of the you know five priorities which they have been you know listing from 2013 onwards when xi jinping you know rose to the uh, current power so because of this you know they are saying that you know uh, before quad also india has developed excellent relationship with you know japan south korea vietnam philippines you know and all other you know countries which had the interest in south china sea and are opposed to china's you know belief that china sea is the china sea so you know so uh, you know china is little apprehensive that india is actually trying to chew more than what it is required and it may be in a position to create certain adverse conditions by itself or with the support of you no know, other nations and therefore uh, probably he was also looking for a window you know for 2 to 3 years during which you know he wanted to checkmate india and this could be also an action to test the response of india of course uh, he uh, being a sensible uh, country uh, he should not have had any doubt on the testing our response the way we responded in doklam so if we can respond in doklam so anything coming in our borders we had no choice but to do it a better job so that could be you know uh, next reason and then you know they are also trying to send a message to tibet because though they are in physical control of the tibetan territory but you talk to most of the you know tibetans they are still not integrated mentally with the chinese nation so by doing lot of activities in tibet and giving them a perception that they are doing it for tibet and not for their mainland so to say probably they want to also you know enhance that connect of tibetan population with themselves and uh, with that they have also brought in about you know 624 model villages uh, closer to the lac where they are trying to uh, settle the civil population and that to predominantly from han chinese that is from mainland so that on one hand they can you know uh, reverse the uh, demographic pattern and at the same time uh, they can you know make this issue of i be non negotiable in future and the entire discussion you know remains concentrated only on the lac and why so there are two things which are important in our agreement uh, with china in 2005 
and thereafter in 2013 we have signed categorically that both the nations in any deliberations will take care of the settled population favorably in a way saying that wherever there is a settled population that will not get, get disturbed probably we were feeling happy because Tawang is a settled population in a big way so its claim in that area in any case will receive but he has used this in a different way wherein he is you know bringing the villages closer to LAC so once he has the settled population here because of these agreements our claim to go beyond that LAC will finish and the we can forget about the IB and combined with that is you know the land boundary law which it is you know brought in on 23rd October 21 effective 1st January 22 and where you know the uh, entire dispute of the you know territorial uh, aspect has been converted into sovereignty dispute so therefore you know all these things uh, in put together, I don't know how much percentage each has, you know, contributed, but all that put together and uh, alongside his effort to divert the attention, you know, from Taiwan, I think this could be, you know, some kind of, you know, motive, uh, which he uh, might have had his the government agencies, global times, I don't know where they have said as to, you know, um, what they have done and why they have done, except, you know, uh, giving a lame excuses and, you know, very, very uh, trivial statements. So it will be, you know, uh, time to see how the subsequent deliberations go. Probably then in hindsight, we'll be able to analyze what could have been the possible reason for China to do what it did in April 2020 and thereafter. And, uh, that was that was very nicely explained, sir. And another important factor, which uh, probably could be true somewhere, is that uh, they also have a sore point when it comes to the Kailash Ranges being uh, occupied by India. So, can we talk a little about it? Uh, definitely. See, uh, when uh, this issue of their uh, enhanced posturing was noticed on North of Pengangsu Lake wherein they had come up to finger four and they were not allowing our petroleum to go beyond. They put, you know, fixed structures and then thereafter, you know, uh, all this thing was happening. And then they did these things in other areas also. And uh, despite a lot of efforts to talk at local levels to, you know, invoke the uh, treaties of peace and tranquility, but nothing was actually much moving. Uh, so, if you see the location of Pengong, so it has, you know, these eight fingers on the northern side. The southern side, there is a huge range which is known as Kailash Range. In fact, the in 1962 also, the, the fightings, you know, took place uh, on this range, uh, about the Rezangla and the Gurung Hill, the famous, you know, battles. Recently, we have had the Rezangla Memorial also created in uh, Eastern Ladakh. It was, you know, uh, barren but most dominating to have a look and you know impact on the uh, Chinese garrison and troops and also it was in a position to actually impact operations on northern bank of Pengang so should it take place. So in a master stroke I think India captured the Kailash range and since they were not connected on both sides of the you know Kailash range and their you know current garrison um, it takes more than 12 hours for them to reach the you know southern side Therefore, you know, though they tried to rush, but by the time they could reach, you know, the battle was already won by Indians. We were already in control of the uh, major peaks to include the Gurung Hill, Magar Hill, and this uh, Mukherperi, uh, Richinla Pass, and South of Pengang. So, you know, once they found that we are now in a much more advantageous position, probably that was trigger for them to understand and go for negotiation in a meaningful manner. Though the diplomatic effort was also being made wherein, you know, Honorable Raksha Mantri and Honorable External Affairs Minister had talked to their counterparts in different countries and, you know, different uh, opportunities. Besides the, you know, border negotiation committee also interacting at the government official level. But it was this military action actually, which, you know, made that change and consequently into which number of core level, uh, core commander level talks uh, took place. And by the end of 12th core commander level talks, we could resolve all the issues, but for, uh, you know, uh, Devsang planes and hot spring. 13th core commander level conference was very negative uh, for what will be the regions. Either it must be indicating towards, a, you know, uh, hardening stance of China, or maybe they want to buy a little more time to before to say so that their face off is, you know, uh, exit is uh, better. 
uh, that will be known tomorrow once uh, people meet to discuss this issue because they agreed to this point uh, uh, after a lot of you know deliberation because we have had made you know two communications to them to agree for the 14th core command level because we wanted to resolve so that the peace and tranquility you know communicates so this action on kalash range you know in a surprised move with a fast speed was a master stroke and it you know on one hand as the galwan brings a different shade of watershed in the history of sino uh, indian relationship similar is this you know our capture of kailash range you know this has set the ball rolling now whatever you know china does he will also think you know at least number of times before he tries to you know uh, needle indian uh, sensibilities actually uh, you know it was uh, something which we always felt that china felt it was a sore point with them but you know sir as we continue i think you know the confidence building measures and the conflict resolution between the two countries you know can be a very separate uh, sort of a uh, interview and talk all together and because we are here uh, in a run up to army day i just wanted to understand from you you were in the eastern command and i just wanted to understand from you sir that uh, wa- what sort of administrative changes could be there uh, could be envisaged at the you know in the eastern ladakh for the indian army so that it makes it stronger there and when i talk say administrative i also mean formative so we definitely had a core which was set up only for uh, you know this reason but what other things could be added to it what what more could what what number of battalions more could be added brigades if needed because you know so earlier when uh, when we had uh, the 14 core being set up uh, this sort of an issue was not envisaged but today there is another issue so is there a requirement for the indian army to you know expand in that area i think you know uh, this issue is uh, on one hand very very important but at the same time it is very challenging as well because if you see on chinese side of the border it's you know large amount of tract is you know largely connected if they are on a kind of plateau on a high altitude but a kind of plateau where the movement can be you know easier done as a case that in our case we have to climb up suddenly and to then reach the ridge level at the areas of lac and our borders are just imagine you know eastern ladakh there then thereafter you uh, find that uh, total no go position before you reach the you know uh, himachal pradesh now some you know effort is being made to the lateral connectivity then after himachal pradesh then thereafter then again there is a problem of lateral connectivity from the forward area at least in the middle area then you come to uttarakhand and then there is a huge nepal where again the chinese trying to uh, make uh, inroads then you have the again your you know sikkim jetting out and then after sikkim then you have problem of another country of you know uh, hit chumbi valley and there after bhutan and then you come to the entire arunachal pradesh so as of now we don't have the kind of axials and laterals to have large amount of troops which can be mobilized from place a to place b now what it implies it implies that invariably each sector will have to be self contained to fight its at this defensive battle which will imply that you know larger quantum of troops will get committed on ground and in the overall matrix if the troop you know resource is not enhanced then the offensive quantum will reduce that is as far the manpower equation is concerned but then there are methods also to compensate that you can have a larger quantum of the you know fire power larger quantum of air power larger quantum of unmanned platforms actually today uh, a swarm of drones you know can replace a uh, complete uh, squadron of the aircraft so the the technological advancements and the the uh, unmanned platforms and the cyber warfare now these are the things which have to be now currently they are you know at, at a very high level now they have to be brought down to the formation level i for one find no reason as to why a formation commander down to the brigade level should not have a component of mechanized uh, element maybe you know tanks or a bmp depending on the area in which that you know formation is deployed because for deployment in erstwhile time we were looking for mechanized you have to have large swath of the you know plain areas but even uh, if they are moving in a line ahead still there are certain distinct advantages against the infantry so to say of course once you know the uh, deployability is not there then tank to tank battle you know there is a problem 
so they have to have wherever it is possible they have to have dedicated you know magnetic element they have to have a dedicated you know um, dedicated to pop the you know unmanned platforms a higher fire power you know as compared to what they are having now that there some centralized you know resources there and then it, this is being used in one place other place so the the higher quantum of you know the the force has to be structured to fight that battle then it has to be equipped with a higher quantum of you know fire power Higher quantum of unmanned platform, higher quantum of mech forces, and the logistics were with all, you know, to uh, keep pace with that kind of thing. The people there, uh, though they are acclimatized and they are being changed over over a period of time. But if a person goes, uh, you know, uh, after a gap of thirty days and he has to be employed again in that area, so in a super high altitude, he takes almost twenty days to acclimatize. So as against the current conventional method of acclimatization, where a person, you know, stays to a place and then gets acclimatized, the modern means of the those chambers have to be, you know, brought in in adequate numbers, where you know he is put through for twenty four to forty eight hours and he is acclimatized to get launched into the battle. Should a so situation so, you know, demand. of course the uh, turnover has also to be managed the the uh, medical support also has to be the you know of a very very high level and down to the you know forward post the conventional medical support will not work in fact chinese have suffered in such a big way they don't know what has hit them in fact that's why they the turnover in their case has enhanced they are now training actually for you know fighting in the high altitude so the health concern has to be taken care of optimally because then thereafter it also is linked to the morale of the people who are going to uh, fight of course the you know civil infrastructure i talked about this little early that has also to be developed in the fast pace there is uh, no uh, no situation that uh, there is a brigade headquarter equivalent formation and you don't find a uh, you know air strip for landing of the at least the you know uh, shorter capacity aircraft or the rotary wing uh, to you know supply the resources are you know move people from one place to other force there has to be high quality axials laterals and since you know all this costs money which will be also an issue once you uh, thereafter uh, sometime discuss the defense budget and uh, that kind of money may not be available for defense uh, budget so to say but the nation has to look at the you know dual use uh, civil infrastructure and uh, because it should not happen that you create an infrastructure exclusively for war fighting and then war fighting doesn't take place so the other country has already won its battle you know by bleeding you without fighting so that infrastructure has to take care of the civil needs of that particular areas population it's you know growth development schooling and anything everything of that kind and larger involvement of locals like we have already increased the number of uh, ladakh scouts battalion post kargil and uh, there is a need to increase more you know subject to the that kind of you know people uh, being available and same has to be done in you know in himachal in uttarakhand in sikkim and in arunachal pradesh because when the natives are forming part of the you know armed forces in that particular area in form of scouts then there is a different kind of connect and they bring in a local knowledge and you know criss crossing on the both side of border also if the situation so requires while substantial amount of effort is you know already being done by the government but you know i think we have to move and move very very fast on all these counts right so that was wonderful sir i think you know it's a discussion which can is endless and it's so engrossing that one doesn't want to stop at all but then you know i think we'll leave a lot of things for the future discussions which we've planned with you and uh, it was wonderful sir uh, we wish you a very happy army day and uh, not only you we wish the whole nation and of course uh, it's always been a pleasure you know for radio and an honor for us to have everything coming from the horses mouth we don't Thank want you. to presume we just want you to you know we want the right person to tell the right thing and you have just done that sir thank you very much sir thank you ma'am and thank you chitali you know it has been a wonderful experience being with you and uh, it's you know our responsibility collectively uh, towards nation building and take it to a level where where you know our uh, next generation can be proud of us yes absolutely sir i i agree with you absolutely Absolutely. Thank you. So thank you very much, Atali. Thank you so much, sir. It was a real privilege to hear you, and there was so much to hear actually. And um, it, I'm sure our audience would love to uh, hear all this from you. And definitely, as Ma'am said, we have more more things to 
ask from you. We will plan more sessions. Thanks again and uh, wish you a very happy Army Day. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Ma Thank you, sir. Have a nice Thank day. You. Okay. Absolutely.